Hello everyone, this is Devin Thorpe, your host for the Crowdfund Beat, and I'm so excited to have with us today Michael Dowd, who Michael, Patrick Dowd. Patrick, please forgive me, but Patrick is the uh, founder of the Millennial Trains Project, and it's just an inspiring, wonderful project that you want to know more about. Patrick, please forgive me. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Well, tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about this project. It's just amazing. Sure. Well, we're running a series of crowdfunded transcontinental train journeys across the United States for young innovators. The idea itself comes from a similar project that I helped lead in India about two years ago. We did our first journey last August from San Francisco to D.C. It was a big hit, and we got the next one coming up from L.A. to Miami this March. So what are the dates of the trip here in March? It's March 16th to 26th. We're going to have a caravan of vintage rail cars uh, that mostly travels by night. On board the train, we'll have lectures from distinguished mentors, and we'll stop in a new city every day where our participants will advance projects that they pitch to get on the train. And we've got an amazing uh, group of people stepping up to crowdfund their way onto our next journey with projects that range in focus from small business to citizen science to racial reconciliation to graffiti murals for social change that one applicant wants to throw up in all the communities where we stop. So it, this is a platform for people to advance their aspirations on a national scale, and there's still time to apply. This is very cool. So uh, the crowdfunding stage of this is going on right now, is that correct? That's right. So if people want to learn more about these projects, what website do they visit to go review the projects? They can go to crowdhitch dot millennialtrain dot co. And that's a website. It's sort of like Kickstarter, sort of modeled off of that. Um, and the way that people are getting on board is by proposing projects that they want to advance across the localities where our train stops, and then racing to raise five thousand dollars. And that's what powers the train. So the train is literally powered by people's aspirations. And we always tell applicants that their project ought to be about whatever they consider to be their personal, professional, or creative frontier. We don't judge it. We don't have a, a hoity-toity admissions panel. The thing that gets people on this train is their hustle and their vision. And we welcome hustle and vision from anybody that wants to um, partake in this great journey across the country. Now, uh, this is just going to be a, uh, you're just hopping on an Amtrak train in LA and riding that regularly scheduled train across. Is that right? Um, actually, we're taking a different approach. What we're doing is leasing vintage rail cars from the 1950s. This is from an age uh, in travel that we have not returned to in some time. And boy, there's no better way to travel across the country than on this equipment that we have, which is basically right out of a time machine from the 1950s. So on this train, we sleep on the train, we have meals in the dining car, we have lectures in the dome car, amazing glass dome car, so you can see the country coming by um, as, as, we, as we go across it. And there really isn't another classroom like this in the world. It's just going to be amazing. Now, who are the, the, you call this the millennial train because the people on the train are, I believe, millennials. They're young people. Is that right? Well, all of our applicants are millennials, yes. And this train is designed to go against declinist attitudes about the future of our country and also about negative perceptions of the millennial generation. And you can look inside our train. You can see who's stepping up to apply for it, and you're going to see some of the best of what our generation has to offer. So that, that, the train is created by millennials. I mean, everyone on our team is under 30 years old. We have a lot of people older than us, though, that I think support the concept and the aspirations of people involved in this, and it wouldn't be possible without the support of, um, of, of older generations, of our parents, of our teachers, of our mentors, it's key. And so on the train, I would say it's about four-fifths millennials and, and one-fifth older mentors. And these mentors are people that are distinguished practitioners uh, from different fields, and they come on the train and they lecture about what are the new frontiers in journalism, in entrepreneurship, in technology, in travel. And we learn from them, and actually 
the learning goes both ways, and that's actually quite exciting. I think the, the mentors appreciate uh, the opportunity to, in a pretty uh, intimate setting, uh, hear about what's exciting uh, our generation and what our new frontiers are. This is really, uh, really exciting. What a fun project. Uh, can you give us a, a couple of examples with some specifics about some of the projects that the uh, people will be uh, undertaking with the, with the Millennial Train? Absolutely. Well, looking back at our last journey, what was really exciting is to see some people use this as an opportunity to further their professional interests. So there was a energy uh, research scientist from Washington, D.C. He used it as an opportunity to tour national energy laboratories as he went across the country, and he created an interactive map um, as a result of that. Other people use it as an opportunity to pursue some passion that maybe they don't get to do on a daily basis. So for instance, we had a participant who is a digital press secretary in the White House, and her project was all about poetry, because that's what she loves, but she doesn't get to do it every day. So this is really an opportunity to push yourself. And maybe you're an entrepreneur, you want to connect with new customers or test an idea in the communities where we're stopping. Or maybe you're thinking about quitting your job and you want a little bit more reassurance that there's really a market out there uh, to catch you and, and, and carry your new idea. This is a great opportunity for either of those things. And then, I mean, it's just awesome to see artists and entrepreneurs and scholars and even people who maybe don't know exactly where they want to go in their life. This is a perfect opportunity for anybody who's at an exploratory phase in their life to get some real experience and broaden their perspective. Well, it does seem like uh, just a, a, an inspirational uh, train. I mean, it really is just a wonderful thing where, where you've got great people coming together. Uh, are you? You mentioned that there will be uh, the, the dome car will serve as a, a classroom of sorts. Who will be teaching there? What? Wh how? What will be the curricul curriculum on the train? Well, we'll definitely have folks from our partners and collaborators. Um, for instance, National Geographic and McKinsey and U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Some folks we already have con confirmed, for instance, include the head of Global Youth Affairs from the State Department uh, is going to talk about what are the new frontiers in diplomacy. We have the senior most editor from the Associated Press talking about what are the new frontiers in journalism. We have very uh, well-regarded venture capitalists from Silicon Valley talking about new frontiers in business creation. So that's, a, that's really the um, concept, is to have people with real depth of expertise running the perspective of uh, the participants on our train. Well, this is uh, an exciting, uh, uh, really, uh, opportunity for everyone. It's, uh, and, and, and people that are watching us now can participate sort of vicariously, right? Uh, now, are, what kind of updates will we have from the train as you're going? Are you going to be tweeting? Are you going to be uh, on YouTube? How, how are we going to be able to participate and watch what's going on? Uh, well, we are 100% transmedia. So we, we're just taking every um, chance that we can. I mean, I would say that a big part of our communications are user-generated because with each one of the applicants that comes on our train, part of the application is explaining how are you going to use this uh, experience to uh, create something of value and share it with others? So each one of our individual participants will be sharing in their own mediums in the way that they want. In terms of us as a project, what do we do? Uh, we find that you know, connecting with local traditional media outlets, like the local newspaper, the local television station, the local radio, that works great. And surprisingly, I think radio works the best. In small, medium-sized cities across the country, uh, you, know, you get on the radio and walk down Main Street, and everybody knows you there. And radio is very powerful. Of course, we're also tweeting. We have someone on our team who's in charge of trying to capture the moments in, in Instagram, put it up on the Tumblr, get it out on the Twitter. Um, we have an on-train documentarian uh, with video who's created shorts videos, sending those out along the way. So. That's something that's really unique, actually, about the Millennial Trains Project, as opposed to other sort of gatherings for innovators, entrepreneurs, creative people, is that this is not just some kind of exclusive uh, thing 
uh, uh, closed off from everybody else. It's very much outward facing, and a big part of the motivation for doing it is to inspire other people and inform them about the kinds of opportunities that exist, particularly in small and medium-sized cities across our country, which are quite vast. Wow, this is just, uh, I just couldn't be more excited than, than, than I am to learn more about this. Now remind us, what's the website where people can go to, to uh, donate to the crowdfunding campaigns? It's called crowdhitch.millennialtrain.co. But millennial can be a hard word to spell, so I would advise Googling Millennial Trains Project, and that'll take you to our site. Millennial Trains Project, Google that. I oh, see, that makes much more sense because you can never remember how many L's and N's are in millennial, can you? No, it's a source of constant struggle for us. <laughs> yes, I, I, I imagine there's been more than one millennial train sign tossed in the garbage after it was printed. Yeah, well, you know, that's the messy work of creating a new bold venture. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, uh, Patrick, thank you very much for being here, and uh, I'm so grateful that you would make the time for us, and I wish you every success with the campaign. What's your Twitter, hand, Twitter handle? I think it's Millennial Train, right? Uh, yes, at Millennial Train. Okay. We'll, we'll follow you there at least, but hope to see you on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else as well. So thank you very much for being here with us. Thanks, Devin. All righty. Let's do some good.